The Big Bluff by Terry Canefield is a fascinating narrative that delves into one of the most audacious financial frauds in American history, Charles Ponzi's infamous investment scam. The book traces the rise and fall of Ponzi, a man whose name has become synonymous with deceitful financial schemes. Set in the early 20th century, The Big Bluff offers an in-depth look at Ponzi's life, his elaborate scam, and its lasting impact on society and financial regulations. The story begins with Ponzi's humble origins in Italy and his immigration to the United States, where he arrived in search of fortune. Despite early struggles, including a series of failed business ventures and brushes with the law, Ponzi's resilience and determination never wavered. These early experiences, Canefield suggests, helped shape the audacious risk-taker Ponzi would later become. Ponzi's big break came when he stumbled upon an opportunity to exploit a little-known financial instrument called the International Reply Coupon, IRC, which allowed people to send postage across international borders. Ponzi's plan involved purchasing IRCs in bulk from countries where they were cheaper and then selling them in the United States at a profit. Although the idea seemed plausible on the surface, it was nearly impossible to scale this model effectively. However, Ponzi used this concept to lure investors, promising them extraordinary returns, 50% profit in just 45 days. As the word spread, investors flocked to his scheme, believing they were making a safe and lucrative investment. The real brilliance, or audacity, of Ponzi's plan lay in the fact that he never actually profited from the IRC scheme. Instead, he was running what would come to be known as a Ponzi scheme, where early investors were paid returns using the capital from new investors. As more people poured money into the scheme, Ponzi used the funds to pay off earlier investors, thereby creating the illusion of a profitable business. Canefield details how Ponzi's charm, confidence, and ability to convince even skeptical financiers allowed him to build an empire based on nothing but promises. For a time, Ponzi lived lavishly, enjoying the fruits of his fraudulent scheme. He bought a mansion, indulged in luxury goods, and presented himself as a self-made man who had cracked the code to financial success. His newfound wealth and high-profile status in Boston made him a local celebrity, and he was hailed as a genius by many. However, Canefield emphasizes how Ponzi's success was built on lies and manipulation. Eventually, the house of cards began to crumble. The scheme began to unravel when journalists, financial analysts, and government officials started to investigate Ponzi's business practices more closely. Through meticulous research, Canefield describes how Ponzi's finances were scrutinized, exposing the scam for what it truly was. The moment of reckoning came when a financial audit revealed that Ponzi owed more money than he had on hand. The crash was swift, and Ponzi's empire collapsed almost overnight. Investors lost millions, and Ponzi himself was arrested and charged with multiple counts of fraud. Canefield doesn't just recount Ponzi's downfall, but also explores the broader implications of the scheme on the financial world. The Ponzi scandal led to significant changes in regulatory frameworks and financial oversight, as authorities realized the need for stronger safeguards against fraudulent investment schemes. Canefield also touches on Ponzi's life after the scandal, including his eventual deportation to Italy and his later years, which were marked by further schemes and failed attempts to regain wealth and status. In The Big Bluff, Canefield brings Ponzi's character to life. 